Hello and welcome back to The Watch Guys. I hope you are safe and well. This week something very special has happened. This has just arrived. It is my first ever Laurent Ferrier timepiece. This is the Laurent Ferrier Galet Micro Rotor Square. It's just arrived and I know what you're thinking. Who is Laurent Ferrier and why on earth am I so excited about it? This week I'm going to answer both those questions and I'm also going to tell you why Laurent Ferrier is so exciting and why you should have one in your collection. And here it is folks, this beautifully crafted, sumptuously elegant, simple watch is a Laurent Ferrier Micro Rotor Square. It's my first watch by Laurent Ferrier, a watchmaker that I've been increasingly hearing a lot about, and who until recently was almost impossible to get hold of in the UK. This week we're going to look at Laurent Ferrier, the man and his company. We're also going to look at this micro rotor square in detail. We're going to do an unboxing. We're going to look at the full range of Laurent Ferrier watches, and I'm going to tell you why I am so excited to finally own one. But before we get started, a quick wristwatch check, and under the blue jumper this week, I have a Patek Philippe Calatrava. This is the 5227G, and I thought it was particularly appropriate to wear this watch when we're looking at one of Patek's former employees, and a watch that in many ways has many of the same characteristics. This is the first Patek Philippe that I ever purchased. It is absolutely beautiful. I will never get rid of it. This is a 2017 watch. It's 39 millimeters in white gold, and it has a sumptuous ivory dial. It also has a secret officer's pocket, and it's one of my all-time favorite watches. But this week is all about the Galet Micro Rotor Square this little beauty right here. This is the navy blue, and as you can see, it's got an uncomplicated, elegant dial and single sub-dial, as indeed to many of Laurent Ferrier's watches. This is the first time that a Laurent Ferrier has been made available in steel rather than precious metal. Galet, incidentally, is French for pebble, and this references directly the smooth, thin cases of the majority of Laurent Ferrier watches. It's meant to feel as if you're holding a smooth pebble in your hands. We will look at this beautiful micro rotor square in detail in just a minute, but first, I'm pretty sure you're going to want to know all about the history of Laurent Ferrier itself, and also why you should be seriously considering adding one of these to your collection. Laurent Ferrier joined Patek Philippe in the 60s, having qualified as a watchmaker. He had two passions in the 70s, watches and motor racing, and he indulged in both of them. He worked at Patek Philippe for 30 years, but during the 70s, it was the motor racing that he indulged in the most. He competed in the most famous motor race of all, Le Mans, coming first in the two-litre class in 1977, and third overall with his friend Francois Servanen in the Crema Porsche 935 in 1979. Ferrier actually gave Servanen a Patek Philippe at the time, and they both vowed that one day they would create watches as high quality as that. Fast forward to 2009 and both got together to form the Swiss-based Laurent Ferrier, with the aim of creating a watch company specializing in halt horology built to the highest levels of quality. And as you can see now, Laurent Ferrier looks pretty much exactly like Richard Attenborough in Jurassic Park and Miracle on 34th Street. Ferrier's first watch was the 2010 Galet Classic Tourbillon double spiral, a neoclassical cream dial leather strapped watch with a single seconds sub dial and black numerals. This timepiece received the GPHG Men's Watch Award, so Ferrier's first ever watch out of the gate and it won one of the top prizes at the GPHGs. He had arrived. The Galet Secret was launched in 2011. This was based on the double spiral, but it had a really cool feature where the owner's custom picture or design is gradually revealed under the dial as time passes, as you can see here. In 2012, the micro rotor model was launched in a traditional case. This was Ferrier's interpretation of Breguet's invention, and a micro rotor actually sits in the movement instead of on top of it like a traditional rotor. This allows the watch to be thinner, and as you can see here, it makes a real difference, especially for an elegant dress watch. 2013 saw the beautiful Galet Traveller, one of my all-time favorites, and possibly the next watch that I would get from this company. It adds two windows, one for the date and the other for a home time, and the hours can be advanced with the press of one of the two pushes on the side of the case. 
You also can get a fabulous enamel world map version. But 2015 saw the introduction of the new Galley Micro Rotor Square. This was a new shaped case for Laurent Ferrier. It's the one that I have here, and it's something very new for my collection. It stands out, it's unlike anything else that I currently own. It's different to everything else, but quintessentially Laurent Ferrier. It's stunning in its simplicity, and it also won the Revelation GPHG Award. Ferrier is a third generation watchmaker and his son Christian is also part of the business making movements. It's believed that at the moment the company only makes 150 watches a year, which is why it may take a while for your Laurent Ferrier to actually arrive, but it does make it all the sweeter when it finally does turn up. In terms of the current range, it's split into five different categories. You've got the Classic, you've got Ecole, you've got Square, you've got Grand Sport and you've got Bridge. And apart from this little beauty, my pick of the range would be the Classic Traveller and the Classic Micro Rotor, but perhaps the one with the cream dial and numerals, which I think is now discontinued. Or what about this Micro Rotor Square with a jet black opaline dial? Yes, that is pretty cool as well. So now it's time to enter Unboxo Vision. Let's have a look inside the packaging of this Laurent Ferrier. So the watch comes in an oblong black box with Laurent Ferrier Genevre written on the front and you open that up and inside you've got a black steel loop. You also have quite a nice sumptuous watch box itself which looks like the sort of thing you get sunglasses in. If you lift up the two tabs either side of the box itself you'll find inside you've got a wipe to keep the watch clean and you have two booklets. The first booklet details the specifics of the watch itself so it highlights there this is the square micro rotor 41 millimeter it's in stainless steel and the movement is the FBN 229.01 and it confirms that it's a blue dial with white gold indices and white gold hands. Then below that you get another little silver fronted manual and this is telling you exactly how to operate the watch, so the instructions. Then we get to the watch box itself. It's a lovely brown clamshell which looks like wood but I'm sure it isn't. And you open that up and inside you've got the watch lying flat in its own little compartment. It's a very classy piece of packaging. It suits the elegance of the watch itself. And there you go, just look at it. What a little treat. So why am I so excited to finally receive my first Laurent Ferrier? What is it about this watch that gets me all fired up and makes it a pleasure to wear? Well, I like the square but smooth case and the fact that it's highly polished. I love the blue strap. I love the blue dial. I love the pure simplicity of it, it's absolutely beautiful, very easy to read, even with my duff eyesight. I think the hands on it are absolutely beautiful. It's got an exposed case back, so you can check out that micro rotor in detail, and it is a thing of beauty, believe me. I like the meticulous hand finishing. I think it's effortlessly stylish, and I like the thinness on the wrist. Why did I choose this one in particular to be my first watch from this company? Well, I think for me it was the blue dial most certainly and the overall aesthetic, but also the fact that it's their first steel watch. So it felt quite historic to me. It also has a youthful feel that some of the more precious metal models don't quite have. This is a 41 millimeter case watch. It's got a 72 hour power reserve, which makes it very practical. And because it's thin, it's very comfortable on the wrist. Looking at the back, you can see the exposed movement and that micro rotor set into the movement itself. The micro rotor has a double direct impulse escapement fitted onto the balance, a silicon lever, balance spring with a Breguet overcoil and a Guilloche gold oscillating weight. It really is a beautiful movement and it highlights the high level of craftsmanship that Laurent Ferrier prides itself on. It also highlights Ferrier's commitment to historic watchmaking, but using modern materials to create greater levels of efficiency. It's a very special and unusual blue that you've got for the dial of this watch. Uh, you have elongated hour markers in white gold, and you obviously have that seconds subdial as well in blue set at the six o'clock position. It's got beautifully sculptured minute and hour hands. It's effortlessly elegant. Because it's thin, it's very wearable. This is one of those watches where, depending on the light, that color blue looks radically different. Sometimes it's a dark navy, sometimes it's quite a light denim color. The light really does play off it constantly, giving you a different experience every time you look at it. 
Since I've only just got this watch, really the only downside that I can find is to do with the strap and the clasp itself. The clasp doesn't feel particularly sturdy or nice when you click it in. And also because it is a brand new watch, the strap is quite stiff still. So it's gonna take a while, I think, for this strap to soften up and for it to feel truly comfortable. It sits a little bit proud at the moment because the strap is still quite starched. But I have to say, first impressions, I absolutely love it. I'm really excited that I finally got my first Laurent Ferrier, and I'm sure there will be more to come in the future. And now the question I'm sure you're waiting to ask, where do I get one of these? How did I buy it? Where did I buy it? And also, where can you get one? Well, initially I contacted Laurent Ferrier directly because when I looked on their website, there was no UK distributor. There was nowhere in the UK to actually buy their watches. So I contacted them directly via email and just sort of said, look, how can I get one of these watches? I'm really excited. I'd like to get my first one. And they replied pretty quickly, very courteous, and explained that absolutely they could provide them directly. However, the downside was, and the thing that worried me the most, was that I had no real control about the import duties or taxes that would arise if it was sent into my country. I had these horror story visions of buying the watch at full retail price and then there being another 10, 12, 20% added on top in duties. So that kind of put me off. Fortunately, at the exact moment that I was looking to buy one of these and talking to Laurent Ferrier, wouldn't you know it, Pietro at the limited edition, who you may remember sources my Constantine Chaikin watches, he only went and became the official agent for Laurent Ferrier in the UK. So all I had to do was phone him up, tell him about the watch that I wanted. We put an order in that day and hey presto, a few months later, this watch arrived. So finally, there is a reputable and secure and trustworthy source for Laurent Ferrier in the UK. And that means there's a route to buy more of them, which is both a fantastic thing, but also a very dangerous thing. Well, that's it. I hope you enjoyed this episode on the Galet Micro Rotor Square by Laurent Ferrier. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Hope you enjoy what I'm doing on the watch guys. Please subscribe, leave comments and likes. There'll be another episode along next week.